Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, I would like to just present a very, very simple problem um, related to um, energy and momentum of light. Now, this uh, problem is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented at Unizor.com. <coughs> the website Unizor.com contains uh, a couple of prerequisite courses. One is called Mass for Teens, and another is Physics for Teens. Now, the Relativity for All is a slightly more advanced course. Um, now, we were discussing um, all the uh, different relativity aspects, and obviously um, very important aspects were energy and momentum of objects, basically. So, this little problem is based on whatever um, already had been covered uh, before <coughs> about what exactly is uh, a kinetic energy of a uh, moving object and what's the momentum. And uh, I just would like to apply these uh, two characteristics to light. Now, <coughs> just a couple of more, more words about the website unizor.com. Well, first of all, it's totally free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached. You don't really have to sign in if uh, you don't want to do it in a, some kind of a organized fashion under a supervision of somebody, etc. So then you will need uh, just to enter uh, name and password. Other than that, if you just do it yourself, you don't even have to do that. Um, it's relatively comprehensive uh, courses, uh, uh, as rigorous as possible, because I'm a mathematician uh, by education and I would like everything to be very, very rigorously proven, if possible. In physics, it's not always possible. Obviously, experiment takes a lot of uh, um, weight, actually, in all the physical research. But theory is very, very important and it's all based on mathematics, obviously. So you really have to know uh, math before you study physics mm, more or less seriously. Um, uh, the website contains more than a thousand lectures. Every lecture has um, notes, very detailed notes, which are basically like a textbook. So you have a video presentation of the lecture and you have notes for this particular lecture um, at the same time on the screen. Alright, so I do prefer actually you to use uh, the unizor.com website because it contains all these notes, etc. The YouTube, for example, where you can find these lectures, it's not as um, user-friendly in this particular case. And what's important, the website basically is driven by menus, which means you have a sequence of lectures, what follows which, etc., etc. You can always switch in, uh, in YouTube or somewhere else that's not available. Okay, so let's do back to problems. First of all, let me just explain um, what exactly have been covered before and how would I like to present it in reference to light. First of all, we have already derived the expression for kinetic energy of moving object if its mm, rest mass is m0 then its kinetic energy is described by this formula that's basically a previous lecture i think previous or one before that also we were discussing the momentum of moving body and momentum is this. So, M0 is a rest mass mass in the system of coordinates which is uh, basically uh, tied to this particular object where this object is at fixed position. U is um, speed in this particular object. Um, now, obviously, in case of uh, momentum, u is a vector and p is a vector, but right now it's not really important. Let's just consider only one dimension. 
so it's moving uh, uh, w with some kind of a constant speed, let's say, and then that would be its momentum. <coughs> so the difference between relativistic momentum, for example, and classical momentum, classical momentum is this, just mass times um, speed. And this particular uh, factor, so 1 over this square root is called the Lorentz factor, and it's called gamma. <coughs> so existence of this Lorentz factor is what's really very characteristic for um, relativistic um, mechanics. It pres it's actually it's, it's present in most of the formulas in some way or another. So what's my problem right now? I would like to um, find out what is this ratio energy, kinetic energy to momentum um, for light. So what's the problem about light? Why do I really specify it as a problem? Why don't I just divide light one by another? Well, the problem is that, number one, light has no rest mass. Mass is zero. Light mass, light rest mass is zero. That's number one, number one problem. So it's like zero divided by zero, that's undefined. Another problem is speed of light is c. So if u is equal to c, I have c square over c square, which is 1, 1 minus 1, 0, and I have to divide by 0. So none of these formulas really have some sense in, in, in case of a light. Now, so why do I would like to calculate this one? Well, because if I will start really calculating this, it might be, you know, a little bit easier uh, to do something. And let's just think about how can we do it. Well, first of all, mass here, here, and here will just cancel each other. So we have dealt with mass. doesn't really depend on mass at all, this ratio. So um, we, we can simplify our problem. Another simplification is <coughs> the following. If this can be expressed in this way, k is equal to mc squared times gamma, which is 1 over this square root, right, minus 1 and p is equal to m0u times gamma. So if I will divide one by another, what will I have? Well, mass is definitely cancels out. But here, now, u is equal to c, right, for speed of light. So it would be c squared divided by uh, c, so it would be C. Now, how about this? Gamma minus 1 divided by gamma. Now, gamma is equal to 0, so I cannot really divide by 0. But what I can do, I can divide gamma minus 1 by gamma, and I will have 1 mi minus 1 over gamma. Right? Now, 1 over gamma is square root of 1 minus u square c square. So, in case of u is equal to c, it's just equal to 0, so this one is equal to 0. And what do I have? I have a very simple uh, equation. k over p is equal to c. So, that's basically is um, the formula which I wanted you to know about light. Well, usually the specification of kinetic energy in, is not emphasized for light because light has only kinetic energy basically so and usually they use the letter e for general energy so e divided by p is equal to c or e divided by c equals to p 
in any way this is the formula. Now, um, this formula was very interesting, which we have derived uh, from relativistic expressions. Um, it was actually obtained in at the end of 19th century, something 1800, by um, as a consequence of research done by um, uh, the physicist by the name Pointing. So it was actually based more on electromagnetic properties of light and Maxwell equations. So it kind of predates, this formula predates the relativistic theory. Um, so from the relativistic standpoint we still come up, come up with the same thing. Now, why? I mean, for a very simple reason, because relativistic view is completely um, in uh, accord with Maxwell equations. So Maxwell equations internally uh, are not really classical, it's more relativistic physics, because the classical, for example, the Lem transformation, they are not invariant relative to Maxwell equation. So Maxwell equation are a leap forward from the classical um, physics to relativistic physics without even knowing about this. That's what's important. So as I was saying, this is basically derived a long time ago, and right now we have come up to the same formula, but from a different aspect from the aspect of purely relativistic standpoint. But, again, as I was saying, it was the, the, uh, first derived from classical, uh, well, not from classical physics, I would probably say from Maxwell equations in the theory of electro electromagnetic fields. So that was a really very kind of a simple um, thing to, to basically explain, because everything is already here, and to get to these little um, Arithmetic is, is not really difficult at all. On the other hand, on the other hand, you can consider this to be maybe a little bit less contradictory if instead of um, M0 is equal to U and U is equal to C uh, for light, speed of light, you can consider U as a variable which is which which tends to C. So we're talking about some kind of an object, the speed of which is changing and it's approaching uh, C. Now, if it's changing uh, and uh, approaching to C, we will just have to have a limit of this, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma, uh, which now gamma is not equal to 0, obviously. But even in this case, it's uh, really very simple because the limit of that thing, gamma is actually going to um, gamma is going to infinity, right? If u is equal to c, that would be 1 minus 1, so it's 0 in denominator. So what is the limit? What is the limit? Of gamma minus 1 divided by gamma, if gamma is, uh, tends to infinity. Well, that's a simple mathematical thing, and obviously you can do it uh, dividing uh, member by member by gamma, so it would be 1, 1 minus 1 over gamma. Now if gamma goes to infinity, that thing goes to 0, obviously, and you have 1 as a limit. So, basically I did exactly the same here, I just didn't really use the word limit, and uh, that was kind of obvious, that 1 over gamma, uh, 1 over gamma goes to 0. So that's it. Very simple problem, but it's uh, but it it helped to derive a very important formula, which I did not really derive uh, from the electromagnetic field standpoint from the Maxwell equations, from um, th this theory which was developed by um, by pointing. Um, Maybe I will have to return back to Physics 14's course and add this particular piece, so I will have it from there as well. But I'm not sure if I will have time for this. But in any case, we have derived the formula. It's the right one. So the energy divided by 
speed of light gives you the momentum. It it's actually uh, combines energy and momentum for light into one very important formula. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, um, and uh, well, and and take the whole course. I mean, if you found one particular lecture. It doesn't really stand by itself because it's always using something else which was before it, and there will be other lectures which will follow it. So uh, it's very important for you to take the whole course to be more or less, you know, equipped with the knowledge. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much. I'll see you the next time.